Hi guys and welcome back or welcome to my channel. I'm Maddie or a cotton sock and I make Sims 2 and Sims 3 content on this channel. You are currently watching video number two of three in my Sims 2 setup and play series. Our first video in this series talked about where can you acquire the Sims 2 in 2022. This second video right here is how can I fix the Sims 2 and the next and last video in this series will be how can I beautify The Sims 2 to update the graphics and make it a look a little bit better in 2022. So in this video, like I already said, we're going to be answering the question, how can I fix The Sims 2 so it will work? Because if you have tried to launch the game before without fixing it, it usually will play for a little bit. Maybe it'll get to the neighborhood screen, but then it will almost always crash, especially on modern computers, the game usually will crash. In my case, if I don't have fixes applied, it will crash when I am on the loading screen for the entire game. Now, let me just say, before you get in over your head and start to shake your fist at the wall, I am going to show you this in the simplest, easiest way. I promise it really isn't that hard. If you've watched my Sims 3 Ultimate Fixes video, this is going to be easier than that. Regardless of that though, I just want to note that I do make my tutorials over explaining everything just so they are palatable for everyone uh, that's watching back at home no matter your level in technology or scale or anything like that so if I'm going too slow or from over explaining things you already know that is why so with that said and out of the way let's just get right into the fix guide so a fantastic sims 2 modder actually gave me permission to feature their sims 2 setup guide in this video. They are a creator by the name of Osab, so I want to thank Osab so much for letting me feature their guide in this video. We're going to be going step by step everything that Osab has notated in order to get the game up and running. So of course this video assumes that you already have The Sims 2 installed on your computer. I personally have mine on Origins, so all the fixes that I apply are going to be on The Sims 2 Ultimate Collection usually it doesn't matter if you don't have ultimate collection your file directories may be a little bit different but you will be able to install this whether you have the disk or the origin or whatever so let's begin to go down the steps in osab's guide now this may look a little bit daunting at first but we're gonna work through this together and i'm gonna show you guys how truly easy it is to get this game ready and set up okay so the first step in this video although on osab's guide it is step three is the graphic fixes now we're gonna be going with the graphic graphics rules maker, which this will usually solve almost all of your problems. But if you are still having pink flashing, we can come around to this option, but I'm going to go with like generally what's going to work for everybody and show that. And then I'll swing back around if you launch your game and you're still getting crashes and all that, but I will leave that for the very end because this isn't going to apply to most people. So graphics rules maker is a program made by Sims network. I think this is who it's by, but it's a great program. You may actually already have this program on your computer if you come down here to your windows key and then you just type in graphics rules maker if you don't you can just come to this website and hit download now and you can install it don't worry all of the stuff that i'm going to show in this video today is safe none of this has any viruses or malware so don't worry about that these are all very well known and renowned programs that literally will make this game run for you so don't worry about you know getting any viruses or anything like that everything i'm going to show in this video is safe so what this program is going to do it's going to make the resolution of the game look better and it's going to make it compatible with HD monitors which I mean all of us pretty much nowadays as long as you aren't running on like a tube monitor are going to have HD monitors. If you have a 32-bit computer you can install this version of Graphics Rules Maker. If you don't know what version you have just go with like the general download here and if it's not letting you open up the program then switch to the 32-bit version. But you can just follow the installed instructions. I'm just going to get the program opened up right now so 
I'm gonna open Graphics Rules Maker. Oh, by the way, I should mention that OSAB recommends that you launch this in Administrator. So when we type in Graphics Rules Maker down here, once you have it, we're just gonna go and hit Run as Administrator. It's going to ask you for permissions, and there we go. Here is the lovely Graphics Rules Maker. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to the Game tab here, and we're gonna make sure this says The Sims 2. Depending on how you install this program and if you installed all the additional plugins, you're just going to want to make sure that this says The Sims 2. Next up, you're going to want to point the path, which means wherever you installed The Sims 2. If you don't know where you installed The Sims 2, there's actually a really easy way to find out. If you go to your desktop icon, wherever you have your Sims 2 game, if you still have your desktop, right click on it and click open file location. And this will bring you directly to where the game is installed super easy now mine is auto matched because the program found where the game was installed but if yours is saying game not found then you're going to want to point this to the right place you can also hit locate game and it will auto find it but if it's still not auto finding wherever you have the game just use the desktop on the icon little tip that i gave you guys where you can open file location and then you're just going to hit browse and then navigate to wherever this window opens up okay so now that we have both our game selected and the path we're going to keep going down the list the first thing you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to hit auto detect on this this is going to say graphics rules maker will now attempt to automatically detect the best settings for your system it will not be saved until you click save files these settings are not guaranteed to work but we're going to make them guaranteed to work if the detected settings do not help you should change options manually do you want to continue you're going to hit ok and then it is going to auto detect what the game recommends as the best settings based on your graphics card if you come over here to device info and this here it's going to detect your graphics card if it says in database no you're just going to want to hit add now and then it will say in database yes when you hit add now so i have a nvidia geforce rtx 3060 that's what i have in my computer and these are the settings that graphics rules maker thinks would be optimized for my specific graphics card the main option we're going to want to not let graphics rules maker auto detect is the force texture memory setting what i would recommend for you guys to do is we are going to go down to our taskbar here we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna open task manager now this is gonna show all the programs that i have open um, on my computer right now but what the tab we're really gonna want to focus on up here is the performance tab and then you're gonna want to go gpu now if your gpu isn't appearing in task manager because some older gpus actually won't open in task manager it's not a problem um you can probably just stick with the recommended settings but for the rest of us we're actually going to customize this force texture memory value right here if you come here to your dedicated gpu memory right here there's going to be a math equation that we are going to do it's really simple trust so whatever this number says right here so for example mine says 1.3 out of 12 gigabytes i'm going to take that 12 value and i'm going to multiply it by 1 zero two four which is going to leave me with twelve thousand two hundred and eighty eight now your value isn't going to say 12 or it might even say 12 but for the majority it's probably not going to say 12 it might say eight it might say six it might say four it might say two so for people where this value says four you would do four times one zero two four which would be four thousand ninety six if this value here says eight it would be one zero two four times that eight one nine two and so on and so forth because when i do 12 as my value here is 12 times 1024 my number that it comes out with is 12,288 so you may be asking me and scratching your head maddie how is this important to what we're doing here well you're going to take whatever value that this spits out and you're going to input it right here you don't need a comma so don't put the comma in i'm not sure if it'll work if you put a comma in but my calculator says 12 Two eight eight. when I multiply my GPU memory by 1024. So I'm just going to do that. There we go. So I have 12288. This is the value that is optimized to work with my dedicated GPU memory. Now, some of you may not have a tab here that says dedicated GPU memory. OSI recommends that if you don't have this right here, when you open up task manager, then just stick with whatever this program auto detects. Okay. So now that we are done with that, we can close all of that up. And there are two more things that we are going to to adjust in here so one of the things that you're going to want to make sure that you have ticked on is disable texture memory 
estimate adjustment. You're going to just make sure it's checked on. Next up, we are also going to make sure that we have enable driver's memory manager checked on. And then we are going to uncheck disable SIM shadows. And then we're gonna leave everything else in here untouched. And by the way, if you are on a different graphics card, you may have some of these ones down here checked. You don't have to untick or check any of those. Um, so say you're on like an Intel graphics card, uh, you may have maybe high quality yet Intel graphics. You may have that checked, leave it checked. But for those of us that are not on Intel graphics, you don't have to check anything else. Or if you're on AMD, just don't check anything else. This program will automatically tick those on if you have a specific graphics card. We're gonna come down here and we're going to hit save files. And there we go. So now our Sims 2 game is updated to have these nice new settings. This will also make the game, I forgot to mention this, this will also make the game run in the best resolution depending on your monitor. If you have a 1080 monitor like I have, then it's going to say 1920 by 1080. You don't have to adjust it. I'm just explaining what these do. If you have a 4K monitor, this is going to be like what 1440p or something like that. So just leave this based on there. This is actually making the game run in those bigger resolutions. And so it doesn't look like absolute crap when you launch it. So once we have hit save files, we can actually close this down. So this is the sim shadow fix in base game Sims 2, just because of the outdated graphics, you will actually get this huge block under your Sims's feet. So we have to install a shadow fix by Sim Nopki, who is a very well-known creator in the Sims 2 community to fix this giant block under their feet so it doesn't show like that. Now, Osab actually recommends that if you're not using DXVK, which all of us are not using DXVK at this point in time, at the end of this tutorial, I will swing back to this, uh, the whole DXVK conversation because it's not gonna apply to the majority of us. But for now, we're all gonna pick a version that uh, we like. So personally, I really like the shadows. I like heavy shadows under my Sims's feet, but this depends on your kind of taste. So I'm gonna go for the 0.4 version. This is what I use in my game. So we're gonna come down here, scroll down to the download section here, and we are just, all of us are going to download the 0.4 or the 0.3 or 0.2, whatever, you know, depending on this image, whatever you guys like. I'm gonna personally get the 0.4. It's gonna take us to Sim File Share, which we're just going to hit download. I'm also going to leave a little heart. It's very important that we support our creators with a little heart. It's a one extra click, okay? And that is going, at least for Chrome, it's going to send a download down here. So I'm just gonna open this right up. And this is going to give us a package file here, the Sim Noki Sim Shadow Fix. So then what we are going to do is we are all going to go into our documents. So if you go into your Windows File Explorer, then go into your documents. You're going to go into EA Games. We're going to go into the Sims 2 Ultimate Collection for me, or yours might just say The Sims 2. And then mine is going to say The Sims 2 Ultimate Collection once again. I don't know why, but I have two The Sims 2 Ultimate Collections. Okay, don't ask. If you don't, then just go right into The Sims 2 Ultimate Collection. And then it's going to bring us into this folder. If you have a fresh, clean install of The Sims 2, you're not gonna have the downloads folder. So all we're gonna do, this is super simple. We're gonna right click anywhere in this folder. So don't right click like on a folder already. Just make sure you're like right clicking in like the space next to it. Right click, we're gonna go new and we're gonna make a new folder and we're gonna call it and you have to type it exactly like this, downloads. Just like that, capital D, all one word as though download is in already one word, I don't know. And then after that, we're just going to go into that folder. It's gonna be empty and all we're gonna do, this is super simple, is download that shadow fix that we just installed, just drag and drop it right into our downloads folder. And then now we will not have these giant boxes under our Sims's feet when we actually load into the game. And that is it. That is all we have to do for the first step in this Sims 2 graphics guide. That is super simple. The Sims 2 is super easy to set up. So this is gonna be the final program for the majority of us. Okay, there's a little asterisk. For the majority of us, this is gonna be the last step. So this next program is by a creator named Lazy Duchess. If you have ever come across my channel before, I am a heavy endorser of Lazy Duchess. I think their creations are phenomenal and they don't charge a penny for any of their creations. So in the description box below, along with all the other links I've mentioned in this video, I will leave a link to the sims 2 rpc the sims 2 rpc actually has some really cool features so if you have discord when someone clicks on you on discord it will actually show what household you're playing and if you're paused or if you're in live mode and the name of your sim as well it will also show how much money they
they have. If you're loading into the game, uh, it'll actually show, you know, you're on the neighborhood screen in the neighborhood you're in. So this live updates, like you don't have to do anything. It just does it all in the background. It is so cool. The fact that this is a thing blows my mind because this seems like some technology that would have been in like the future. Now, if you don't want people to like see what you're doing in The Sims 2 uh, at the current moment, then there's a really easy way to just turn this off altogether, but it is so cool. So that is called the Discord Rich Presence. That is a part of RPC. RPC also has some really cool sort of adjustments, some micro adjustments that you can make. You can set it into windowed mode. You can do full screen. You can do borderless. You can do windowed, whatever you guys prefer. You can also have the smooth camera rotation, which is a setting in RPC. You can also set the design tool cost. So when you're recoloring something in The Sims 2, the game automatically will charge you 15 simoleons. I set this to zero because like I already bought the object. I shouldn't have to pay to recolor it. There's also borderless. So you can alt tab really quick in and out of the game, which is just like borderless is something that I feel like all games just need. Like we just all need borderless nowadays. Another cool, and I think this is relatively new, is the shadows and lot imposters. So in The Sims 2, there's a thing called a lot imposter, which is basically like how you view outside lots, like outside your current household. In base game Sims 2, they'll actually be blurry just because of like the game's graphics and how old the game is. And this is a little bit experimental. So, I mean, Lazy Duchess, I don't think has fully came out with like the full version of this setting. You can actually set this to enhanced, which will make it so the lot imposters render in a much higher resolution. So they look a lot better. And you will also see the better model like on the neighborhood screen too. So it will actually look like nice. And last but not least, Lazy Duchess in RPC has included an EP chooser. So you can choose what expansions you play with and which ones you don't want if you don't want a certain one. So that is everything in RPC. Uh, now that I have pitched it to you guys, I'm telling you this has single-handedly changed the way I play The Sims 2. This is so important to me. Like to get RPC, I just, I, I adore it so much. So I'm going to download this from Mod The Sims. I don't think you need an account. Actually, I'm not even signed in. So let's see if you can download from Mod The Sims without an account. So personally, I am going to install the web installer. If you want the manual installer and like to extract it and all that, you can do that. But we're going to do the most simple version here and we're just going to do the one click installer. So once you have installed that, we are going to just double click the Sims 2 RPC.exe. We're going to give it permissions and then it's going to bring up this little tiny window here. So we're going to click install slash repair. It's going to download and that is it, guys. That is all you have to do. It's, it's a super easy one click solution. Now it's asking me if I would like to create a desktop shortcut, you're going to click yes on this. You definitely want this. And I'm going to tell you guys why in just a second here. Then it's going to ask if we want to launch our PC, you're going to click yes. And here it's going to download all of the necessary resources. So it's going to bring this window up now. On the right here, we have a newest, what, what's been added newest um, in our PC, which is really great. It's like a really transparent way of what Lazy Duchess is working on and things that they are adding to this launcher. Now under here, in my personal gameplay and this is going to differ so i have automatic updates checked to yes now the next setting in here is going to do with the discord rich presence now this is exactly uh what i showed you guys before actually let me show you on my discord of what this actually looks like okay so this is my discord server i will leave a link in the description box below we also have like a screenshots oh this is so cute oh my god one of my mods oh she has such a pretty sims 2 game anyways we also have uh many channels here if you guys are interested so anyway one of my mods is actually in The Sims 2 right now. So I'm going to click on her. I'm sure she doesn't mind being featured in this video. You guys see how it says playing The Sims 2. When I left click on her, it actually tells me who she's currently playing in The Sims 2. So she's playing Vidkun Curious in Strange Town. She's currently in live mode and she has the game pause. As you can see, I mouse over here. She's paused. So she just has the game open, but she's not doing anything. And it also tells me how many simoleons she has with Vidkun. So this is what the Discord rich presents. I think I kind of explained it poorly before but if you want that on you can leave it checked on i think it is the main draw of this to be honest like rpc is great and all shout out lazy duchess but discord risk presence is like next level i also have smooth camera rotation as you can see when i mouse over here it says rotate the in-game camera freely like the sims 3 i'm a sims 3 kid so i leave that checked on this last one um you can kind of see this here there's like a little gif normally in the sims 2 when you attribute personality points to your sim it will change whatever zodiac sign they have. As you can see here, Lazy Duchess is actually changing the playfulness of their sim and it's not altering their personality at all. I personally have this unchecked because I don't really care what my sim zodiac sign is. I really don't at the end of the day. The next option in here is design tool cost. I set this to zero. This is the cost 
cost whenever you recolor an object in your game, how much you want it to cost. By default, it's 15 simoleons. I set it to zero. The majority of us are gonna want to have borderless for our games, for our windowed mode. That just means you can alt tab in and out of your Sims game. Next up, I enable screenshots. And then under advanced, I leave single threaded unchecked. And I also apply the four gigabyte patch. You are going to want to make sure you click this. Make sure you have the four gigabyte patch checked. You need this for your Sims game to launch. And then last but not least, we have automatically clean catch. You can leave this checked on. This just cleans out your files every single time you load your game. So after that, we're gonna hit save settings here and that will save it so every single time you don't have to redo and like uncheck and you know change values or whatever. Now in the second tab here, you're going to have to launch your game and play around a little bit to kind of know how much you can push the limits of your graphics. The Sims 2 is still an old game at the end of the day. There's some problems with the graphics that will never be fixed, even with lots of modding by the lovely modders in this community. One of the problems I know that a lot of people were having is they were setting lot imposters to high in RPC and it was causing crashing and pink flashing. Or you could just leave them by default. It doesn't matter. It just looks like base game Sims 2 if you don't touch them. One thing I do like to do though is put turn lot view ocean inflections on. Look at the difference here. Look at the difference. It really just elevates the graphics. You can see when I check this on and off, it gives us a little photo of what that setting actually does. I just think it looks so beautiful. The game looks so realistic when you turn on the ocean reflections. But once again, you're going to have to go into your game and see if your computer can handle all that. We're going to hit save settings once again after we have done all that and we are going to close out of the game. There's one last thing that I want to talk about with The Sims 2. The Sims 2 has a long running bug where Sims that are the first born in each family will all look the same. If I have Dustin Broke and Angela Pleasant have a baby in The Sims 2 right now with no fixes installed, just base game Sims 2, their first born child will always look the same. Always. There's no differentiating between their firstborn. My firstborn child with no mods in a vanilla Sims 2 game with that couple, Dustin Broke and Angela Pleasant, will look the exact same in your vanilla Sims 2 with Dustin Broke and Angela Pleasant. It is called firstborn syndrome. It is a really weird bug that was never fixed with the Sims 2. Lazy Duchess's RPC fixes this, but you have to make sure that you are installing the right files in the right location. That's why I recommend running the web installer. So if you have just done what I did with you guys, if you went through all those steps, you don't have to do anything additional. Just warning you, caution, if you choose to do the manual installation, which we just did the one-click installer, so you are all okay, as long as you followed my instructions that I just gave to you guys, then you need to make sure you're putting the files in the correct location. Now, you may be asking yourself, how do I get into The Sims 2? You cannot use your Sims 2 Ultimate Collection icon on your desktop anymore. If you notice, when you installed The Sims 2 RPC, it installed a brand new icon icon on your desktop. From now until infinity, eternity, and beyond that you have RPC, you're going to launch using the Sims 2 RPC. So we are going to delete the origin icon, the base installation icon. You're going to just delete that and you're not going to ever use it again. And what you can do now is you can just rename this brand new icon to the Sims 2 and that is your new Sims 2 launch icon. So forever on, you guys are going to use the Sims 2 RPC icon. Now you may see this other icon. It says the Sims 2 RPC settings. If you double click on this, this will actually just bring you into the menu that we were just in. What you can do is you can either leave this on your desktop if you wish, or you can just delete it. And say you want to get to that settings menu once again, after you have deleted the icon, if you right click on your RPC, your brand new icon, not the base game origin icon, and you hit open file location, this will bring you to your Sims 2 install directory. And you guys can see in here, you have the Sims 2 RPC settings.exe. This is the same exact menu we were just in because for me personally, I like to have a really clean desktop. I like to get rid of any icons that I don't use. So I don't like having the settings icon on my desktop. I'm going to leave the settings open. And I think for the first time that you launch The Sims 2 RPC, you have to launch it from your settings menu. So just go in and double check uh, that you have all your settings that we want. So for me, it's changing the design tool and making sure it's borderless and then going to graphics and turning on Law Ocean Reflections. Now don't close this out because we have to come down here and hit save and play. Now, note when I do this, it's going to open up a little black terminal window. Okay, watch very carefully. It's going to open it. You guys can see this here on the left. It's going to close it very quickly and this will only get quicker. It's not going to take this long every time. Oh, and there we are. Oh, she's here. Oh my God, guys, we did it. We are in The Sims 2. Oh my God, look at the little intro here.
here. It's so cute. Oh my God. So this is with our brand new resolution. This is with all of our fixes applied. Guys, we are finally in The Sims 2. Oh, I love it so much. How cute is this little intro? This gives me so much nostalgia. Here we are. Oh, okay. Here we are. So as you guys can see here, uh, the resolution has this blue around it. That is a good thing. Okay. That is a good sign. That means that the window has expanded for graphics rules maker when we did that first step it expanded so it's bigger so that it's you know stretched to your screen because monitors are bigger than they were in 2004. I mean a monkey could have told me that right so we're going to wait for this to load so once we have loaded into the game your loading screen is going to look something like this this depends on the expansion packs you have and whatnot what I would recommend to you guys is play the game for a little bit play it for I don't know an hour or so see how it runs and test it out that way now once we have loaded in to a town this is the lovely town of pleasant view here we're going to come down here to the three dots and then we're going to click on the graphics and performance options right here i have all of my graphics on high i'm not sure if they'll be on high by default but you guys can change those in here you can change your audio options in this menu i would recommend turning off display custom content dialogue at startup turn that off it's gonna shoot you a notification every single time you load into the game and that's just annoying if you click here to display custom content dialogue you're going to want to make sure you enable custom content if you would like mods in your game and those off the top of my head are all the settings just offhand that I remember to change I'm trying to think I'm trying to rack my brain so I would recommend just loading into a household and just play around for a little bit just like see everything make sure the game runs nicely travel to some different lots and see different people yeah that is my recommendation to you guys as you guys can see my game is is completely up and running it's working fantastically but some of us might not be as lucky that the game runs well on the first try so i am now going to circle back to if your game is having trouble even after applying those two fixes that we have talked about for the vast majority of you guys almost everyone if you are playing and after an hour your game is running well leave the video right here okay so this is after you have play tested and made sure that everything runs well and you're not getting any what is called pink flashing. Pink flashing is a very rampant problem in the Sims 2 community. It happens when your game runs out of memory. If after an hour your game is still running okay, you're not having any problems, then please don't do what I am about to show. For the rest of you guys that are having trouble, if you are having pink flashing, especially if you are on AMD graphics, so if you have an AMD graphics card, you may need Need to install a program called DXVK. So first of all, what is DXVK? DXVK enables old graphical languages to talk to new graphical languages. So for example, The Sims 2 uh, uses like Direct 9 graphics and most computers don't support that anymore. So we need a program like DXVK that allows Direct 9 to talk to our new modern hardware. So what you're going to do if you are still getting pink flashing is we are going to go and check if your computer, first of all, is supported by Vulkan. So you're going to go to this link. I'll leave it in the description box below. You're going to test your computer with this EXE. If it says that you can run it, then that's great. You're going to continue on. So the first thing you're going to do to get DXVK is you are going to go and download DXVK. Come here. We're going to just download the top one. It says DXVK 1.10.3. That's what the current version is as a recording this video after we have done that we are just going to open this file up here okay so once we have installed that you're going to be left with a file that says dxvk and then the version number but whenever you're watching this video it's going to be a different version that's fine so we're just going to double click on this and osab writes that we're going to go to the 32 folder so go to the 32 folder and from the 32 folder we are going to make sure that we take out d3 d9 dot dl just this one file guys just one what we're going to do is we're going 
going to go to our install location for The Sims 2. Once again, if you don't remember how to get to here, you can go to your desktop, just right click and hit open file location. After that, you're just going to drag and drop d3d9.dll. Just drag and drop it in the TS bin folder. You must run the game in borderless or windowed mode with DXVK. And you can do this in RPC, just like I showed before. So if you go to your Sims 2 install location with The Sims 2 RPC, you can just go into the settings file, just open that up and make sure that your game is either on borderless or windowed. You cannot run full screen. Borderless is pretty much the same thing as full screen. So just go with borderless. The second part here is necessary if you want installed DXVK, which we just did. And it's also necessary if you assigned your texture memory to a value outside the range of 1700 to 2048. So that means if you go into Graphics Tools Maker, the first step that we did in this video and your value in forced texture memory is outside of this range right here, 1700 to 2048, this is a necessary step. So we need to go into our folder that we were just in and we're going to right click anywhere in this folder and we are going to create a new text document. So we're going to go new and then we're going to go down here to text document. It's going to say new text document dot txt and we are going to rename this file dxvk dot c o n f. Make sure that at the end it does not say dot txt. If you have hidden file extensions, if you have that turned on, then just erase that and just hit enter. And so now if I go into properties, it's going to say it's a dot conf file. So make sure it says that when you go under properties. Next up, we're going to right click on this file that we just made. We're going to go open with and we're going to hit more apps and we're going to scroll down to find notepad. We're going to hit OK on notepad and then it's going to open up notepad with this file. We are going to copy and paste this right here or we can just type it out. So D3 D9 dot max and then available capital A available memory capital M equals and we're going to copy and paste that in there and then we're going to take this value that we put in graphics tools maker and we're just going to copy and paste that right in there so this is what mine is going to say make sure that you have your own value slotted in here in this file and then osab writes that another tweak that you can put in here is just copy and paste this on a whole new line so after you have done these two things in there you're just going to go to file we're going to hit save and then just close it out so there is all we have to do you can just save and close it out and then try to launch your game and play around a little bit after you have put these two new files. So remember, we added two things. We added dxvk.com and then we did d3d9.dll. Those are the only two things that should be extra now that we have done this additional step. If you are having trouble with your Sims 2 game, it is hard to find places that will actually support and help you out with this problem. My first recommendation, and I will leave a link to this in the description box below, is Sims Cord. Obviously, I recommended my Discord earlier in this video, but I have a smaller Discord. I have a really small Discord. Sims Cord is a lot bigger, and as a result, there is a lot more people to help you out. If you come on Sims Cord here and then you scroll down to Sims to help, you can create your own new thread. So say I'm having pink flashing, and then we can say I did graphics rules maker, uh, Sims 2 RPC, and DXVK, and then I'm still having pink flashing. And then all you have to do is tag your post and then post it, and someone will get back to you and help you out. So if you are still having problems after everything that we did in this today, this would be my recommendation of where to go. Um, this is a lot bigger server, so there is more people to help you out with your Sims 2 issues. If you're into Sims 2 mods, which we are going to talk about in the next video in this series, the final episode in this Sims 2 setup and play guide, they have some really great stuff where you can find CC and clothing and mods, just really great stuff. Like they have constantly people posting about their creations and things that they have found on Tumblr and all that. Like, look how cute this hair is. Oh my God, it's so cute. And last, in the next video, I will be showing all of my little tidbits of how I get my Sims 2 game to look beautiful like this. That is including reshade, Sims 2 defaults, and all of that goodness. So that will be it for today, guys. I hope you learned something and I hope I could help you get your Sims 2 game up and running. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, guys.